Hello from the capital city of Uganda, Kampala. My name is Becky Waterman and uh, this is where I live, here in Africa with my husband Dave. Uh, we are here working with Mission Aviation Fellowship, an organisation which operates light aircraft to reach isolated people groups. Um, Dave is an engineer specialising in all the electrical systems in our planes and I myself am, am an author and a Bible teacher. We're in Uganda now for the duration of the craziness that the world is facing right now. Uh, Uganda has closed its borders to anybody going in or coming out. Um, schools and churches have been closed down along with all public transport. Private vehicles now are not allowed on the roads and gatherings of more than five people have been banned as well. At the time of this recording, there are 44 confirmed cases of the coronavirus in this country. Um, it's quite low numbers, but tensions are running high here, as I'm sure they are wherever in the world you may be watching this right now. A lot of my work here in Uganda involves Bible teaching and preaching. And uh, as all of that has been cancelled for the time being, I thought that I would take it online. Uh, there are so, so many great resources out there at the moment, but, but I thought this is such a great opportunity to be able to keep you updated with what's happening in Uganda and also just to encourage you a little bit with some of the great truth that we find in God's word. You know, no one really knows how they're going to react to a situation like this one that we're facing right now until we're actually in it. I have used that word unprecedented more times in the last two weeks than I think I have for the entire rest of my life. Um, I always hoped that I would be able to face some kind of global calamity like this with, with a serene sense of peace, you know, just floating on a, a fluffy cloud, calm and completely in control, no stress touching me at all. Alas, the new grey hairs that I keep spotting uh, tell another story. As the situation started to, to grow more serious, I was hearing of border closures and hospitals overrun and that catastrophe, the absolute chaos of a global toilet roll shortage. Thankfully, something that we've not really had to face here yet, but who knows, time will tell. All of the events that I had been planning for and, and working towards were being cancelled left, right and centre. And I was, I was waiting to hear if everything that I had on would be left to one side for who knows how long. Instead of peace, I think I was feeling this underlying sense of tension. Um, and, you know, I felt like I was being stretched thinner and thinner, just, just ready to snap. But it's then that I realised that the, the majority of my time had been consumed with watching the news, keeping an eye on the Facebook groups that I'm a part of here in Uganda and um, back in the UK that I was a part of there as well. And all of them, all of those sources were just talking about this dire situation that we were facing. And it's, it's so important to stay aware at a time like this, to stay informed, to know what's going on. But it was becoming more of an obsession. You know, any time I picked up my phone, I'd be checking, right, what's, what's happening in the world right now? Has anything changed? Is there any more dramatic uh, situation that's unfolding right now? And all of my thoughts were being dominated by what was happening in the world. The Bible actually warns us about this. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 22, it tells us the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. Now, this doesn't mean that if you have like an eyelash in your eye and it's irritating you, that the rest of your body is going to start falling apart. What this means is that the things that we look at intently, the things that we give all of our time to looking at, those things will seep into our whole beings. When we spend all of our time looking at a world responding in fear to the present crisis and that fear creeps inside of us as well. 
Yes, stay up to date and know what is happening in the world. That helps us to pray in an informed way. But just think today about where the bulk of your time is being spent. If looking at something fearful spreads fear in our hearts, then just imagine the effect of looking intently at something hopeful. Imagine if believers in Christ all around the world could be so saturated with him right now that when the world looks at us, it sees only peace and joy and hope and a rock of stability in a world of chaos. I want to finish today by reading a passage from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. It says, Therefore we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us a glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Today, I encourage you to fix your eyes on the unseen, not the seen. This mess that we're in right now is only temporary. And we have an incredible eternity to look forward to. As that old hymn goes, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. That's it for today. I'll see you next time. And I encourage you today just to think about what is your focus on? Where are you looking today? Have a great day and I will see you soon.